Stacy. How are Hi. you today? I'm fine. And how are you? I am fantastic. I'm excited to talk about getting the spark back and the <laughs> marriage. Um, so I would love for you to share just with the audience, for those that don't know you yet, uh, a mm -hmm. little bit about yourself, kind of sure. what got you going. Okay, so I am a speaker and published author. I have written over 20 best selling books. I've been on numerous talk shows, um, and I was just uh, placed on Apple News and the Insider, Business Insider, and Yahoo News. Um, I do a lot of coaching and a lot of speaking. Um, on various topics. My main focus is showing people how to overcome obstacles to live the life they deserve. Because a lot of times when we in, have challenging obstacles, we really don't know how to get over the hump. So I kind of show people in a step-by-step, -step, a very simplistic way on how to get over those challenging obstacles because we all have them in our lives. And sometimes it can be very difficult. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and oftentimes what I see in my practice is some of those obstacles are creating issues in the marriage that yes. whether they brought them in or whether it happened in the marriage, some obstacles. So learning to navigate obstacles is huge. So I appreciate that. Um, so tell me a little bit, you know, as I said, we're talking about getting the spark back in the relationship. And so um, tell me a little bit, like, what, do, how does it look to be honest with your partner and why is that so important? Well, for one, you know, when we first start in a relationship, we're all goo goo eyed, we're in love, we want to spend every minute with each other, you know, we can't live without each other. And then, you know, a lot of times as time goes on, our partners, um, and you know, yourself, you know, kids might come in the way, you might have a job, responsibilities, stress, finances, you know, different things enter our relationships, and that causes the relationship to change. And a lot of times, it could even, you know, change the way you're, you're feeling that spark could kind of die down a little, but just because it died down a little doesn't mean it's gone. You could always, you know, rekindle that flame. Um, it just takes a little work. And honesty is really important because one spouse or one partner might feel it and the other partner may not. And you, in order to actually um, have progress, because if you don't talk to your partner, you don't communicate because communication is key. If you don't communicate, then the problem is going to get worse because the other partner is clueless. They're going about their business and the other partner is feeling all these emotions, you know, these negative emotions, and it's just building up. And as it builds up, it gets worse. So, you know, it's, it's very important to always have a good, strong communication between the two. Right. Well, and oftentimes people will hold back. They don't want to be completely honest because they're afraid of hurting feelings or they're afraid of getting into a conflict or things of that nature. And yet one of the things that I always hold to is if you don't talk about the truth, you can't solve the situation, right? So if it's a problem, yes. we can deal with anything. I mean, really, there's always a solution for something, right? Yeah. So if you're honest about what's happening, you will find the solution. Right. Yes. And I, I think it's how we say it also, because sometimes, you know, we could reword things so it doesn't offend the other person. It's all how you say it. You know, sometimes you can't be so blunt. You have to think about how the other person's going to react. You know that person's personality. So sometimes you have to restructure the, the verbiage so it doesn't offend the other person. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We talked a little bit earlier about like how to communicate so that you're being curious instead of accusatory and things of that nature. So um, yeah, that applies here as well. And as we look, you know, at creating spark, we would absolutely be remiss if we didn't talk about date night and our date night routine, right? Oh, yeah. It's very important because, you know, after, when especially when, if you have children, um, you know, or you're working late hours and you're always tired, you you know you need that time to that quality time together. You know, you got put put away those cell phones, you know, and think of something nice to do. Whether it's going to a restaurant, whether it's taking a nature walk together, or whether it's going to the shore, walking on the beach, whatever. You know, everybody has different preferences. Every ha everybody has different likes, but it's important to take quality 
quality time at least once or twice a month. If you could do it, you know, once a week, that's fabulous, but not everybody can, you know, it depends the situation, but you need those, those time together where you're just focusing on each other. You can communicate, you can express your love towards each other. And you, you know, the bond is still circulating and you, you, you're kind of, you're the, it's grow, the bond is growing stronger because you have time to, to spend that quality time and remember why you fell in love with this person in the first place. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you know, even for those that don't have kids, right. So yes. it's easy to just get bogged down by routine and responsibility oh, and it's yes. easy to feel like we have to have to do X, Y, Z versus, okay, what, what do I want to create for my life? What do I want to create for my marriage? And so if you want to create an, a marriage that has a spark, how are you going to do that without actually reserving time for one another? Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. You have to, you have to kind of push the responsibilities away, hang up the code at a certain time and spend that quality time. Even if you're on the couch together, you know, being able to watch a show together and, you know, you know, say one night is, you know, you pick a, pick a, sh a movie. And when that night you pick a movie, you can sit there with some popcorn and just, you know, cuddle and talk and watch the movie. And that's even beneficial as well. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, as we look at the different kinds of things that we need to do, we are, we're trying to create romance in the relationship. And obviously, it doesn't just happen on its own. So when you think in terms of creating romance, what types of effort do you see necessary to make that happen? Well, I think, you know, as time goes on too, sometimes we fall into a ro routine with our, with our partner. And, you know, sometimes you have to kind of spark it up a little bit. And you might even want to talk about, you know, different things that you might want to try together, different, you know, different ways of showing affection in the bedroom, you know, trying new things, you know, some, some, you know, couples will have intercourse and they'll try different, you know, things, you know, different foreplay, different ways to kind of make things a little bit more excitable, try to bring back those, you know, days when, when you were 20 years old and your, your hormones or flying, you know, just try different spontaneous things, you know, or even plan something where you have, you know, you might, you know, go somewhere and maybe actually, you know, go somewhere nice and rent a room for the night, walk, go to have dinner, have, have a show and be somewhere where you're not always, you know, and just do make the effort and, and also talk to each other and see what you don't like and what you do like, you know, one, one spouse or one partner might want like certain things and the other spouse a partner might like other things, but work together and find a, a happy medium, you know, to, you know, have a, a, you know, a more fun, a more exciting type of, uh, of romance. Yes. Yes. And I think you mentioned something that I don't want to just brush by. And that is talking about the sexual intimacy in the marriage, because oftentimes I find that couples, there's one partner who's a little uncomfortable with talking about it. Mm -hmm. And, um, it, it could be a cultural thing. Uh, it can be, uh, um, you know, the, a, a religious teaching. It can be whatever the case may be. It can be yes. for a man. Sometimes it can be like, I have to show up strong and then confident and whatever. And for a woman, I, I need to be desirous. You know, it could be the whole cult, the cultural thing. Um, and it's so important to push through the fear and the anxiety around those conversations yeah, and to create a safe place, right. For those conversations that you get to have these conversations and they are just between the two of you yes. and that you're going to choose to be a safe person for your partner, to be able to be vulnerable about what they desire, what they want, um, and what they need and vice versa. And, and I think also playing in there is the it, not to have thin skin around that. If your partner doesn't like a certain thing, that doesn't mean they don't like you. Right, exactly. Because, you know, one partner might feel comfortable with certain things and another partner, you know, um, may not, you know, you, you know, a woman and a man are, are two different species. And, you know, what sometimes what women like is not always what, what men like. So we have to come to that happy medium. You have to have those open discussions because it's your body. It's your sacred statue and, you know, you have to treat it with care. You have to treat it with love and, you know, you, you need respect 
and you want to be respected. So you need to verbalize what you like and don't like. And if the person loves you, they're going to honor that and they will respect you back. Sure. Yeah. And, and, you know, there's differences between men and women and there's differences between every person on the face of the planet. A hundred percent. You'll come full with. So absolutely. That's so good. Um, so as, as you think about spicing things up and trying something new, do you have any other ideas or encouragements for the audience about, you know, the fresh, the new kind of, uh, aspect of the intimacy? Well, you know, um, it's, it's, you know, some people don't like to talk about it, but they, they do use, you know, people do use different types of toys, you know, to kind of make things more, you know, exciting in the bedroom between one another. Uh, they, you know, like we said, foreplay is a big thing. Um, trying, you know, new things uh, and new positions, you know, things that you wouldn't ordinarily do, you know, and, uh, you know, and talking about fantasies and talking about things that you like with each other and, you know, and things that you're willing to try. And, and because sometimes, you know, people will talk to each other, they'll talk to their friends and one friend might ha have this great story and they might share, you know, about, you know, some certain things in their love life. And the other person's like, wow, my mind's not like that, you know? And, you know, so, you know, sometimes you have, if you have dreams or fantasies, you know, or you have some type of desire to do something, share it with your partner. You know, there's many ways, you know, um, you know, toys have become a very big thing, you know, especially, you know, in, in the last 10 years and, you know, people try different things. They try different ways of, of holding each other, different ways of kissing or caressing each other. You know, there are couples that, you know, might, you know, one might not feel so, you know, comfortable with all the kissy kissy, but there's, there's ways, you know, to show affection that to a point where you, you feel comfortable, you know, that, you know, and I, you know, it's always good to like, you know, see what, what your the other person wants, you know, find out what they're, they want, what they feel they need and what they're lacking, because sometimes a person might feel like they're lacking certain things from their spouse and their spouse might not realize that and say, you know, I, I really want more affection. I want you to hold me more. I don't care about this. I really want you to do this, you know, so really understanding your spouse and what makes them tick, you know, there might be certain spots in their body that, that, you know, make them more excitable. So then you, you know, if you talk to each each other, you know, say, well, when you do this, or if you caress my, my breast, that makes me excited. This makes me feel good, you know, and start doing things that make your partner happy. Cause it's not about always, it's not you, you have to, you know, this is, this is, you know, intimacy is, is, is a very sacred thing. And you really have to, you know, understand what your partner needs. You want to satisfy your partner. Of course, you want to be satisfied too, but you have to think about your partner and it's not always a me, 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 what I want, you know? thing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, collaboration, communication, creativity, being willing to risk, all those things are so important. And I see some questions in the chat that we'll come to after the, we talk about some supplementation. Okay. Uh, so you talk about vitamins to uh, increase sexual desire or to improve women's libido. You want to talk a little bit about what you you have for that? Sure. So, you know, as we grow older, a lot of times there's certain um, nutrients, certain vitamins in our body that grow deficient. Our hormones start to change. Our cells are producing slower. So things aren't working like they used to. We're also getting more sluggish, you know, we're getting more tired and that has to do with the vitamin deficiencies and also the lack of hormones, you know, that we're starting to develop. So L-Argentine is very good because it's a amino acid and it's a protein and it increases the nitric oxide in our body. And what it does is when it increases the nitric oxide in our body, it also um, increases the blood flow. And for men, this is important because a lot of men at the age of 40 start to experience erectile dysfunction. They're not, they're not holding an erection very long, or it might not be as hard. So then when a woman is having intercourse, she's not feeling the sensation, you know, and, the, and it also, that also causes a lot of stress in the relationship as well. So, you know, that supplement is very good, you know, for men. And then for, um, B3 is really good for men and women because vitamin B3 is for energy 
And like we said, you know, when we start to get older and we're still pumping the gun and we're still doing all these responsibilities, we come home, we're exhausted and it's hard to really have that romantic, you know, um, intimacy when, you know, one or both people are so tired. So, you know, that really helps. And then we have also, we have vitamin D and vitamin D, believe it or not, is really good for, for a sexual function. And a lot of times people don't realize this, but mostly you know, there is a, a huge percentage of our nation that is vitamin D deficient. So, you know, you know, if it's really good, I suggest, you know, maybe 5,000 IU a day, you know, if you speak with your doctor and you get a blood test made by a functional medicine doctor, um, you'll find out what your levels of vitamin D are, and they could actually adjust it to, you know, what you, you, you need, you know, certain times, you know, people, if they're really deficient, a doctor might say, I want you on 10,000 IU. So, you know, that's something to look into. And then we also have vitamin E and believe it or not, that's good for sperm count. So, you know, it increases the sperm count in, in a man. So, you know, the, um, so that vitamin is really good. Um, then we have DHEA, and that is also very good for erectile dysfunction. That helps a man, um, you know, uh, keep a, a harder erection for a long period of time. And we have zinc, and that zinc is very good because it increases the low testosterone. You know, when men start to get older, they get lack of testosterone. That's when you see them start to get moody too. You know, that testosterone, you know, um, it, it ha you know, it does a lot of things for both men and women. And a men become moodier and then they're very hard to get, you know, they, they suffer from erectile dysfunction. So that's a supplement you may want to look into. And then magnesium is really good for testosterone. Uh, you know, it helps to balance it and increase it. And it also helps with mood, like we were talking before, you know, low magnesium, you know, um, can also make you moody, you know, so you want to, and that's another um, supplement, another uh, vitamin actually, um, that we are a mineral actually, uh, that we grow uh, deficient in. A lot of people are magnesium deficient, and that's a very important uh, nutrient to have in the body. And um, let's see. And also uh, zinc is also great for women. It also increases the libido in women. So, you know, it's important to have your, your, your zinc. And also with magnesium, women should be taking that as well. And you could also find out what your levels are, you know, for magnesium. And uh, it's, let's see. Um, I feel like I should have had my assistant be putting these in the chat as you said them. So the first one was L-Argentine. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So that one I've got. And then um, if vitamin B, uh, we have vitamin B3 for energy. B, B3 too? Uh, vitamin B12. B3, yeah. D3 or B3? B3. Okay. And then vitamin D was for sexual function. And then we have the DHEA, and that was for a healthy sperm count and also for erectile dysfunction. And then zinc is good for both men and women. Mm -hmm. It helps women's libido and it helps men for, for uh, their testosterone level. Magnesium oh. is very good for both men and women for, for erectile dysfunction and also for, um, for your, your libido as well. And then we have the maca root, which is really great. I noticed even when I was going through menopause, when I took the maca root, it increases your desire because as we get older, you know, sometimes our spouses might, you know, they might want to have intercourse and we're like, leave me alone. You know, I just, you know, I, you don't, you lose the desire and that actually increases certain hormonal uh, changes in your body. Um, it, it, I think it affects also the dopamine and it also, so it helps create um, a sense of sexual desire. And, um, and then we have uh, ginkgo libido and that it also increases a woman's sexual desire. Yes. So um, Christian, I just realized I accidentally sent all those to you. So if you want to send them to everybody else, that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> so um, and then I, you know, somebody did ask about as they're getting older and all that sort of thing. And so I always recommend personally, you know, go to a functional medicine, Yes. somebody who manages hormones, right? Yes. So it depends, sometimes you're just general functional medicine doc has that interest in that area. Sometimes you have to go to a specialist, but to get your hormones tested, um, many, many 
many women benefit from a little bioidentical hormone. Uh, yes, hormonal therapy is really good. I suggest going to a, um, a functional medicine doctor because they give you a very thorough um, a very thorough blood test. They check for things that a normal primary doctor will not check for. And, you know, for women, they give certain blood tests and for men, they give certain blood tests and they look for things and they even check for things before it becomes a problem. And most women don't realize it, but their, their hormones start to change and they could actually use hormone therapy, which will be a cream or a pill. And, you know, it, and it's, you know, you use that and it can balance you and you'll notice it within three months, you'll start to notice a change in your body and you'll feel younger. You'll feel more vibrant. You'll feel more energetic. Your moods will balance and you actually will, you know, want to have that sexual, you know, intimacy with your partner. Great. Great. And um, yeah, somebody's asking about who is a functional medicine doctor um, so a functional medicine doctor is, is basically a holistic practitioner, but they're an MD, right? So yeah. function and medicine, do functional medicine doctor, sometimes a DO is somebody who's more focused on the holistic thing is taking the whole person into play mm -hmm. where traditional medical school is basically let's fix illness, right? Mm -hmm. Where, but where functional medicine is more focused on how do we create optimal health? And, you know, they're both, uh, qualified uh, MDs, but they have their own bent or, um, focus. And would you add anything to that? Um, yeah. I also want to, um, as you mentioned that, uh, you know, they also, a lot of them will do an O shot or a P shot. A lot of women who, um, as they get older, they, um, they don't experience orgasms as well. They feel, and sometimes they'll, they won't be, it, it'll be very hard to have an orgasm and it will be very hard to, sometimes they lose feeling down there, especially if you've had C-sections, you could lose the feeling down below and you're not feeling an orgasm. You're not feeling the sensation. So having sex becomes especially for an older woman becomes more like a job than it does a pleasurable experience a pea shot what what it does is they inject it into certain into the clitoris in certain areas they numb the area up and they they do um they, they actually take the blood out they spin the blood and they separate the blood and they separate the plasma and the blood they take the plasma they inject it back into the clitoris area. And, and what it does is, is it builds a thicker wall, a thicker line of the skin, and you start to grow more sensation. It's like a Cinderella effect at first. First, you don't really feel anything. Then you start to feel a lot. And then, you know, it starts, to, it, it goes up, you know, slowly. And then before you know it, you're, you're very sensitive down below and you're actually, you know, enjoying intercourse. And for men, especially if they have erectile dysfunction, um, ha having a, a pee shot also helps with the erectile dysfunction. It helps with the increase of the blood flow. It helps, it helps with, um, you know, ha having a longer substantial erection so they could actually have a, a good experience as well. Yeah. Great. Thank you for sharing that. That last one I wasn't familiar with. So, um, the, another factor, because I don't think we've mentioned it yet, is for women, your testosterone is higher in the morning. So as especially as you age, you may want to start scheduling some morning intimacy with your spouse to um, have a more pleasurable, ple pleasurable experience. Mm -hmm. um, and then one of the other questions, and I don't know if you uh, speak to this issue, I can always address it if need be, is the question of, um, where was it? <laughs> it was past sexual trauma. How do you um, receive healing? Well, I, I always suggest a, a coach. I, I have a couple of coaches that I know that are very good with that or a therapist. Um, you know, those two, you know, sometimes, you know, ha having, having sexual trauma or having a traumatic event in your life where you were, you know, emotionally or physically abused could have a very big impact on your, your future. Um, I had a friend who, who that happened to, and she actually, she went for coaching and she had someone who actually went through it, the process and had, was well-educated, was certified and taught people from, you know, from the regiment that she created from her own experience. And, you know, she, she was a, um, she, she actually, they have different types of coaches that special specify in these areas. So, you know, some, some of them are grief coaches because you're grieving, you're, you're holding on to that grief, that sadness, that, you know, that, that traumatic event in your life, because, you know, it's very hard to let go of something like that. That's something that like can affect you. 
for your whole life. But if you learn how to cope with it and move on, you know, because we have to always realize the past is the past. We can't change the past as much as it hurt us. We can't change it, but we have to focus on now. And by focusing on now, we can make few, you know, changes for our future. And that's what coaches and therapists help you. And I like, I like therapists also because you find a therapist that you really bond with and a therapist will help, you know, get those repressed emotions out. And it's, it's, it's not an easy process. I'll tell you, it's a painful process because as you're speaking to this therapist, you finally are able to. To the, the light bulb will click and those repressed emotions will come out and they'll be hurtful. But once you get those repressed emotions out and you're able to move forward, life is, is grand. You, you, you're able to actually move forward in your life because a lot of times people repress those emotions down because they're so painful and such a traumatic event. It's better, easier for people to be in denial and push it down than to deal with it. And sometimes we have to deal with it in order to move forward in life. Yeah, and I appreciate the the question, Rich. There's um, so that it it is something that is both individual for the person who has experienced the trauma and collaborative as a couple because yeah. as you're building new memories, new experiences that can be healing to some of the previous experiences. Yes. So when they're doing, uh, when uh, whoever's been the one that's been traumatized is doing their personal work, being able to have a safe place to share it with their spouse is so important um, in, in working together on that. So um, by all means, you know, these questions and other questions, feel free to hop on the summit um, breakdown session on Monday, and we can go a little bit deeper into some of these things. Thank you so much for sharing that with the audience and sharing your time. And I know there are a lot of people that got some value out of our conversation today. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you so much for having me on the show. It's been a pleasure, Anne.